What's up guys, I am Travis and this is how I do things and in this video I'll be firing up my torch and showing you guys how to solder some copper pipe. I'll be going through this step by step and by the end you'll be able to solder copper pipes like a pro. Before you get started, here are some of the tools you're going to need. I left links to most of these products down below. Most importantly, a torch with either map gas or propane gas. I like the torch hat that has the igniter built in. I also like the map gas over the propane gas because it burns hotter. If you're cutting pipe, you'll need a copper pipe cutter and a deburring tool to remove burrs and sharp edges. You'll need something rough to clean up the pipe so the solder will stick. I like to use emery cloth for the outside of the pipe and one of these pipe brushes for the inside of the fittings. Next, you'll need flux with a brush. Flux is an acidic paste that helps clean the pipes and prevents oxidation of the copper and solder. Lastly, you'll need solder. There's lots of types of solder you can use, but I like using the lead-free solder. This is ideal when soldering copper pipe for water that will come into contact with people or animals. Before you start soldering anything, you need to make sure you've got all of your pipe cut to the right length. To use a copper pipe cutter, all you need to do is put the cutter on the pipe, then tighten it until you feel the blade slightly pushing on the pipe. Then rotate the cutter two to three times around the pipe. Then tighten the knob a quarter turn, then rotate the tool again. Repeat until you have a clean cut. Now that we have all of our pipe cut, we can prepare the fittings and the pipe to be soldered. The idea is to remove any defects or tooling marks as well as any dirt so you have a good surface to solder to. Roughing up the surface allows the solder to adhere better, making a stronger joint. You'll want to use emery paper on the outside of the pipe and your wire brush on the inside of the fittings. Then wipe all the surfaces with a clean rag to remove dust and dirt. If you skip preparation or do not properly prepare your pipes and fittings, it's more likely that the joint will leak. When you're done, it should look like this. Now we can apply the flux. The flux gets brushed on before assembly. You'll want to put a thin coat of flux on all the surfaces that touch. So I put flux on the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fittings. After I put flux on all the joints, I like to build up any assemblies and test fit them in the house. Then I can take the assembly back to my bench and solder it together. This makes the joints easier to access with your torch. Before we get started, be sure there's no water inside of any of your pipes. Otherwise, it'll be impossible to heat them up enough to melt the solder. Even a little bit of water can turn to steam, creating pressure. That pressure can push the melted solder out of the joint and cause a leak. Also, we'll be working with an open flame today. So if any of those joints are existing joints inside your home, be sure to protect the areas around where you'll be soldering so you don't burn down your home. And if any of this makes you uncomfortable, stop right now and call a plumber. I'm personally comfortable with it, so let's start soldering. A good rule of thumb is to use the same length of solder as the diameter of the pipe for each joint. In this case, I'm using half inch pipe, so I put a bend in the solder at half an inch so I know how much I'm using. Heat rises, so begin heating the fitting from the bottom. If you're working on a vertical joint, you can heat the fitting from the side. The capillary effect will allow the solder to even move up into the joint. The solder will want to move towards the heat, so heat up the fitting so the solder pulls into the joint. The pipe should be melting the solder, not the flame. So as you heat up the pipe, test to see if the pipe is hot enough to melt the solder. Once the pipe is hot enough, slowly work your way around the joint until it's completely filled. Use just enough solder to fill the joint so there are no gaps or holes. I like using solder with normal fittings because they're cheaper, but you can also get copper fittings with the solder already in them. In that case, you just need to heat them up. And when you're all done soldering, be sure to thoroughly inspect all of your joints. If you see any small pinholes or gaps, you can easily fill them by applying a little more flux, reheating the joint, and then applying more solder. And for the best solder joints, allow your pipes to cool on their own. Trying to speed up this process may make them cool too fast and cause your solder to crack. Remember the flux is acidic and can eat the surface of the copper, so use a rag to wipe off any excess once your pipes have cooled. That's it, I'm all done. I hope I was able to help you with your DIY project. If I was, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and then leave me a comment and tell me about your project. And when you're all done with that, check out one of my other awesome videos up here. We'll see you guys in the next video.